one of the most fascinating training centers in the Marine Corps, the War Dog Training Company. It is fitting and proper that we be met by Colonel, the mascot. The Colonel says, even though I'm a little slow and short on nose, I can lick any dog in the outfit, if I can catch him. Each new arrival is given a thorough checkup by the medical department. Captain Stewart examines their teeth, heart, lungs, and general condition. All dogs accepted in this training program should be intelligent male Dobermans or Shepherds, one to four years old. If they are found physically qualified, the dog's Marine Corps serial number is then tattooed on the right ear. Now comes boot camp, basic training and indoctrination in the Marine Corps ways. While most of these dogs may have been the boss at home, they must learn that here they're only part of a big team. They are taught to obey, to work together, to be Marines. We must not forget that the dog, no matter how good, is useless without a good man. These men, like the dogs, must qualify for this training. Each man, in addition to his knowledge of dogs, must be an expert scout and rifleman. Each man and dog must come to understand and to rely upon one another. They become a combat team. When the dog has completed his basic training and is no longer a boot, advanced training follows. The dog is taught not to trust strangers. He's taught to attack. He learns to be vicious when it's necessary to be vicious. This attack work is not an end in itself. It is to make them alert at the handler's command, watch. But they will attack. They attack on command and release on command. The dog learns to capture, not to kill the victim. He seizes the arm or the leg rather than the throat. The handler has complete control of the dog at all times, on or off the leash. The prisoner is not attacked by the dog unless he makes an effort to escape. By now, the dog is immune to gunfire, explosions, smoke, and confusion. He has learned to hit the deck with his handler. He is combat conditioned. He has learned to be a war dog. His nerves and reflexes have become attuned to the sounds of battle. Near the end, tactical maneuvers are added to his training. The dog lives and works under simulated battle conditions. Here, a patrol moves out to scout a neighboring island. Dogs and handlers are with the patrol. A second handler, for each dog, remains at the command post. Rubber patrol boats are launched. The intervening water is crossed, and they hit the beach. Scout dogs move out in front. The dog stops, alert, sensing danger. The scouts wait close to the ground. A rifleman moves forward. He aims. And an enemy sniper drops from the tree. Opposition is encountered. The fire becomes heavier, and the ammunition runs low. A dog must be sent for an additional supply. A message is attached to his collar. And he's sent to his handler at the command post. He moves rapidly through the woods, a small and difficult target. Into the water he plunges. Bullets from rifle fire splash around him. At the command post, the message is read. More ammunition needed. Quickly, the dog's pack saddle is put on. It is filled with clips and belts of ammunition.
Back he goes to rejoin the patrol. Shells and bombs along the way are ignored, and the ammunition is delivered. Before going to duty where the blue chips are down, the dogs are formed into platoons. They drill and march as men drill and march to more deeply inculcate the ideal of cooperation and coordination. Before shoving off, men and dogs are reviewed. The good Marine can fight or parade, and so can his dog. Returned veterans from Bougainville Sitting proudly on the table, review one of the platoons in training. The youngest member of the reviewing party was born on the beach out there and seems to be already a pretty thoroughgoing Marine. Colonel, having looked everything over, decides the situation is well in hand and shoves off. <laughs> 